Hello, Pastor John here from First Baptist Church in Manchester, coming your way with another daily uh, message from God's Word. And of course, our prayer is always that it'll bless you and help you. And we started off a couple days ago with the um, story of Jesus, where he dealt with four of the great problems that face man, uh, that we all face. And um, uh, there, there, there's the problem of the destructive power of nature. We all have to deal with that. Hurricanes, uh, typhoons in the east, um, uh, fires, uh, earthquakes, uh, tornadoes, uh, 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 floods, all, all these things uh, that, that come against us. And then there's uh, uh, diseases which we're dealing with right now, all kinds of diseases and, and sicknesses and so forth. So these are the sort of the destructive element of da danger of, uh, uh, in nature. And uh, so that's one of the things we live with and we face. But God has overcome that, and, and Jesus overcame it and showed us that he has absolute and total power over all the forces of nature. And that was the first thing we saw where Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee with his disciples and and a, a great sudden storm, a shock or storm, uh, came down upon uh, their little boat, their, their boat and, and the other boats that were with them. And, and Jesus was asleep on the pillow. They woke him up. They were all upset. And he got up and hushed the storm just like that, just said, be still. And then asked them where their faith was, <laughs> because, uh, but but and they were shocked. They were in, they were literally terrified when he did that because they never imagined anybody could control the weather instantly just like that. It went to a it went to a hush storm. I mean a hush peace, just a perfect peace. The moment he said, "Peace, be still, be muzzled, be hushed," and and. Uh, so this was a, a demonstration of his of of God's power in Jesus, and that power that He has over nature. So there there is something infinitely more powerful than the laws of nature, and uh, natural laws and so forth. And that is the power of God, and it can intervene any time, just like He intervened on that storm. He can intervene in situations for us any time. And we've got to believe that. Now, if he does, that's his his prerogative. If he doesn't, that's because he's got something better for us. And and sometimes we have to go through these things. But the uh, fact is that that it shows his power. Then the second thing was, uh, w w once they got across the Sea of Galilee, which was from the north to the south, in the area of Decapolis, he, he runs right into this this guy, which has... Uh, two thousand demons in him, and uh, and Jesus uh, apparently sensed that that he was there. The guy was in the cemetery, he lived in the, among the graves, and cut himself, howled, broke chains, did all kind of scared everybody. And and when Jesus came off the sh off the boat onto the land, this guy comes running to him, and and Mark tells us that Jesus was saying. Uh, the imperfect, he kept saying, come out of him, come out of him, come out of him. So he was talking to the demons sort of long distance, uh, and, and the guy ran to Jesus uh, because Jesus was breaking the power of the demons, and the guy ran and fell down before him, and, and the demons said, don't cast us you know, into the deep, don't, don't torment us before our time, uh, what have we got to do with you, you know, and all this, like demons did sometimes, and, and they said, let us go into those pigs, and Jesus said, go, and they went, and the pigs jumped in the water, and all drowned, and, and of course, you know, the people came then, and, and instead of being happy to see this guy clothed and in his right mind, and, and just beautifully normal again, after all these years of of cutting himself and all this terrible stuff. Instead, they said, well, we want you to leave. So they asked Jesus to leave. And, and of course, the guy said, let me go with you. And Jesus said, look, you stay here and tell people uh, what great things God has done for you. And Jesus left. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a picture. You know, if you don't want him, he's not going to force himself on you. And that's, that's bad. That's dangerous for us because... 
Uh, he's a gentleman, and, and, and he has given us this power to, uh, to open the door and let him come in, let him into our lives, repent of our sins, and uh, realize we need his forgiveness and accept him. And we have that power that, that he's given us, every one of us. And if we misuse it, we're lost. We're lost forever. That's what the Bible says. It's serious business. Um, see, the culture will make you think life is just a laugh, it's a joke, ha ha, everything's funny, just live while you can live, enjoy the booze, enjoy the parties, enjoy this, enjoy the entertainment, enjoy the football, and you know, and some of those things aren't bad, of course, but they become distractions, and people get replace the place God should be in their hearts and lives to give them new life forever and glory with him forever. Instead, they go for these temporary things which uh, uh, just uh, eclipse the truth of God's love and light and so forth. So the Lord Jesus then uh, said to the, when they asked him to leave, he left. And, and it says, the guy that, out of whom he threw the demons said he went everywhere preaching. So, so we, we like to say he went from, 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 from madness to ministry, and some of us know about that. <laughs> he went from madness to ministry, and, and that's what happened to him. And he, he's ministering all over these ten cities of Decapolis. And meanwhile, Jesus goes back across the water, back up to Capernaum, and as soon as he gets there, and that's what we're going to start with today, as soon as he gets there, it says, when Jesus crossed over again to the, in the boat to the other side, uh, a multitude gathered. As soon as he, he showed up, a, a multitude gathered. And, and in the middle of the multitude was an individual. And this individual was a big wheel in that, in that area. He was the president of the synagogue. And he was a high official, and his name was Jairus, and he came to Jesus, and he said, Lord, and he believed that he could, he knew he healed people, he'd seen him heal people, and he said, you've got to come, I have a nine-year-old daughter who's dying, you've got to come, and Jesus said, let's go, I'll come, just like that, and, and they started going to get to head for Jairus' house, now nobody knows how to, long it took, how far it was, but there was a massive crowd around Jesus, and his disciples were with him, and he and Jairus, and, and whoever else was with Jairus, and Jairus, and, and they're going along, and, and uh, all of a sudden, Jesus stops, and he says, well, hold it, and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, who touched you? There's people all around, push it on you, he says, somebody touched me, I felt Here's what he said. He said, I felt my power go out of me. And it's a double thing. I felt my power, and I felt it go out of me. And, and, and well, what had happened, of course, the woman who had a, 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 a bleeding, she bled uh, continually and was an outcast because of that. She was considered cursed, like a leper. And, and um, uh, she had kept saying, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I could be healed. Now, where she got that faith is amazing. Uh, but, but, but she got through the crowd and she reached out and <laughs> touched the hem of his garment. And instantly she knew she was healed. Now, uh, this, this is recorded in all three, in three of the four Gospels. And, and it's interesting that Mark says this woman had spent everything she had on doctors and got worse. <laughs> Luke couldn't say that because Luke was a doctor. Uh, he, he just couldn't, he couldn't. So he said she, she, she couldn't be healed. There's no way she could be. There's nothing they could do. Now, if you go back in history, you find that the, the rabbis had about 10 different procedures that they would use on a woman like that. And it was all kinds of weird stuff they did, and, and, and if none of it worked, she was an outcast, and that's apparently where she was. But when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she knew she was healed, and, and she was terrified. <laughs> it scared her. 
and she was embarrassed and ashamed because of her condition. So she sunk back into the crowd. But Jesus stopped and said, hold it. He said, somebody touch me. And of course, the disciples said what they said. And he said, well, the power went out of me. Dunama, dunamin, dunamin, uh, the dynamite the power went out of me. And he, somehow he knew that. He sensed that. And it said he kept looking for her. He kept looking. He wouldn't go any further. He just kept looking. Not for very long, probably, because she came. She just got convicted and came and, and fell before him and, and told him everything. And, and it was a, what a beautiful sight. I mean, here's this dear woman, and she's totally healed, and she's blessed, but she's confused and afraid. She doesn't still embarrassed and with her problem. And, 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 she, and, she, and Jesus says, go into peace. And, and that's the literal, go into peace. It means go into a life of peace. It's peace with for you from now on. No more pressure, no more outcast, no more pain, no more trouble with that. You're going to be okay. Go into peace. Your faith has made you whole. <laughs> In case you're interested, that was my the door to my uh, printer just flew open. <laughs> But anyway, the, the um, uh, go in peace, go into peace. Your faith has made you whole. And what faith she had to believe that she could just touch Jesus. I don't know where she got that kind of faith, but it worked beautifully. And, and now, here's the problem. This is taking time. All this is taking time. And poor Jairus is, is really probably getting more and more upset because he knows his daughter was dying. And he, in his mind, and everybody's mind, is that if she dies, it's too late. And that's exactly what happened. She did die. And, and, and uh, some of Jairus' servants met him and came to him and said, there's no point in bothering the master because it's too late. She's gone. And immediately it says, now there's, there's, a, there's a Greek phrase there that can, be, that can be translated two ways, and you're not sure exactly what the writer had in mind. But one is, Jesus uh, didn't heed that. He, he didn't pay attention to it. I mean, he heard it, but he, he rejected it. And the other is, he overheard it. So you don't know what, which, which one actually happened, but, but either Jesus overheard it, which seems like probably the most likely thing, but in the, in the process, he rejected it. He, it didn't matter. She was dead. And, and, and so immediately he catches Jairus before his heart sinks, and he says to Jairus, don't worry. Let's just keep going. Don't worry. Just believe. And even though he knew she was dead, and Jairus, of course, believed she was dead. And so they went on, however long it took to get to the house. Well, they, well, it must have taken a little while, because by the time they got there, they had the hired mourners there. And in those days, they would hire people to come and wail and cry and, and beat on pans and do all these horrible things uh, to grieve and show the grief. It was really not a very good thing, but somebody had hired these people and they were there, uh, you know, earning their money, making a lot of noise. And Jesus shows up and he says, what else, you guys? She's not dead. She's sleeping. <laughs> and he knew she was dead. And they knew she was dead. And it says they left him to scorn knowing she was dead. That's what Luke says. She left, and they left him to scorn, and, and he put them all out. He said, just get, go away, go away, leave. We don't need you. And he took Jairus, and he took a couple of his disciples, and he went in, and there she was. And can you imagine a beautiful young nine-year-old laying there, you know, cold, dead, uh, it's just mind-blowing for the parents. And Jesus goes up to the little girl and he puts his hands on her and he says, Talitha kumi, which in, in Aramaic means, time to wake up, little girl. 
time to wake up little girl. And she opens her eyes and sits up and he says, look, he says to the parents, feed her, give her something to eat and don't tell anybody. <laughs> he had enough trouble with the crowds. So he said, don't tell anybody. So, so they, of course they told everybody, <laughs> but, 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 but he, he, could, he couldn't be hidden, you know. But he, he did that, and, and there she was, made whole. It was beautiful. So here's the point. Number one, he has power over the storms of life. He has power over the threats of life. He has power over the pandemics and diseases of life. He has total control over these things. Don't let anybody tell you that he doesn't have absolute control over every one of those viruses. Those viruses can do nothing that God doesn't allow them to do. That's the kind of God we have. If he has the hairs of your head numbered, he's got those viruses numbered. He has the cells in your body and the molecules numbered. He's got those. He's in control. And it's all up to him. And we trust him totally. And know that he has all power over that. We're not victims. We're victors under Christ and in Christ for the things of nature. Secondly, you've got death itself. Death itself couldn't stop him. Little girl, wake up. Life came back into her. She was dead and she came back to life. He did that with Lazarus. He did it with a young man. Uh, widow's son, he, and he did it himself, and, and he just had total power, infinite power over death and over disease, just a touch of the hem of his garment, and, and she, was, she was healed, and power over the demons. They, they shrieked when they saw him coming. He just, they knew who he was. We know who you are, the Son of God, and the, 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 the anointed of God. And when they saw Jesus come and they trembled, as James says, they, they believed and trembled. Yeah, well, rightly so. We have a mighty God. And, and Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me the meek and lowly Lamb of God, the humble Christ who emptied himself, had all power, sovereign power, in his own life. God bestowed it upon him as he was a human, and then he went back to being all of God that he was, and now he reigns and rules in glory, and at the same time, in possible for us to understand by his spirit he comes and lives in each one of us christ in you the hope of glory and not only that but he 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 is with us he's with us he's with us to lift our hearts when we're afraid he's with us to to, to blast back the forces of evil that come against us he's with us to protect us against anything in in nature and to heal us when we need it. And so we have a wonderful Savior. And I hope you're just trusting him with all your heart. And I have to say to you, if you have any doubts that you belong to Jesus, all it takes is a prayer from the bottom of your heart and just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I just need you to cleanse me, wash me white as snow in the precious blood. Save me, change me, give me your spirit, your power. Fill me with your spirit, give me a hunger for your word. Cleanse my life, deliver me from those things that I shouldn't have in my life. And if you have that desire in your heart, God will bring heaven and earth to bless you and help you, take care of you and protect you. God bless you. Father, please bless this word to every heart. Thank you, thank you for your mighty power that we are secure and safe and have peace and rest and strength in your love and mercy and goodness. Bless each hearer, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.